Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Star Orga on Mythic in the Nighthold. So this is one of the hardest bosses in the instance. It brings a whole new level of difficulty in comparison to everything else you've seen so far. That said, the fight has undergone various nerfs, making the damage requirement aspect of the fight much easier than it once was. To summarise the encounter, it's mainly all to do with dealing with the heroic mechanics well, especially in the fell phase. There is, however, small changes in each phase that affect how you have to deal with some of those heroic abilities. Now, in terms of raid composition, there are two different groups you can go for. You'll want to bring three or four healers. We'd actually recommend three healers because there is still this damage requirement that you need to deal with. And in terms of damage, you can bring either ranged or melee. It doesn't matter too much. But if you can pick and choose, just go for the classes that do the most single target DPS. In terms of tanks, you can either two tank it or you can solo tank it. Solo tanking it does allow you to bring an extra DPS, which can potentially help skip hard points of the encounter, but it does require you to have a DPS taunt the boss occasionally to allow the tank to drop debuffs, such as the stacking dot in the fell phase. Solo tanking, of course, also has other complications, such as the tank dies, you're probably going to wipe because someone else in the raid is just going to be instantly gibbed. However, either comp is viable. We personally use two tanks on every single one of our kills, but if you can get away with using one, then you should definitely try it. You just have to weigh it up and work out what's best for your guild. Now, before we go into each phase, let's talk about the new mechanic that is present in every single phase, which is Grand Conjunction, which the boss will be casting on a timer. Now, this ability will mark eight players in the raid with a debuff. Four of them will be yellow and four of them will be red, and this debuff lasts 10 seconds. Once the debuff expires, those players will explode, wiping the raid. Now, the only way to remove the debuff is by moving to a person that matches your debuff type. So yellow will move to yellow and red will move to red. If non-matching debuff players collide, they'll also explode and wipe the raid. So you have 10 seconds to move to a matching player without running into a non-matching player. Also note that the debuff has no grace period when it is first applied, so if you're stacked on top of each other and you're unfortunate enough to have different marks, you're instantly screwed. You also need to note that this debuff can be applied to absolutely anyone in the raid, including the tanks. This means that the melee will need to be spread out around the boss when the cast is going off, as well as the range will need to be spread out around the room. Now this is extremely difficult to do without add-ons to help you, as the debuffs don't put any obvious animations on the players apart from a faint coloured circle around them and a tiny little icon above their head. We personally recommend using an add-on called Nameplate Auras. With this add-on you can add spell IDs such as the star sign debuffs from the conjunction cast, and it will display it over players' heads when friendly nameplates are active. If you use it with tidy plates or KUI nameplates at the same time, you can actually make friendly nameplates really low profile and almost unnoticeable until the players receive the debuff. In 7.2, this add-on looks to be losing a large amount of its functionality. This no doubts will make this particular mechanic a pain in the ass to deal with. We'll give you guys a solution to this in the comments of this video next week once we've worked out a fix. Now to make this ability harder, each time the boss casts Grand Conjunction, it will apply more debuffs than the previous time. So the first set is 4 red and 4 yellow. The second set will be 4 red, 4 yellow and 4 green. And then the third set will be 4 red, 4 yellow, 4 green and then 4 blue. However, as you enter a new phase, the Grand Conjunction timer is reset and so is the amount of targets that the debuff is applied to. Now in each phase, you'll only ever see this cast a maximum of three times, meaning that the later cast will apply the debuff to 16 players, which is an absolute mess. There really isn't any specific advice that we can give you for this apart from install the add-on and just do your best to know who is around you and how you're going to be able to get to them, as well as trying to deal with all the other mechanics that are going on at the same time. You are going to wipe to this 100%. You're going to have a lot of wipes to people blowing up on one another. That's just the way it is. Eventually, you'll get it and just get through the fight just fine. Anyway, let's move into the fight and talk about how it plays out from the very, very start. So in phase one, you will only have to do a maximum of two grand conjunctions in this phase. Apart from that, there's nothing else to really know apart from the bolt that hits the tank hits like a truck. So healers need to make sure that you're not caught out and don't let the tank die. Just make sure you're healing him from the start and you won't have any issues. 10% later, phase two will start, which is the frost phase. In this phase, every single grand conjunction actually overlaps with the icy ejections, so you're forced to deal with both of them at the exact same time. Now, the ejections on Mythic are slightly different. They do much more damage, but they also leave a pulsing crystal under the location of where the debuff times out. These crystals deal damage to nearby players, but will also stun you. And on top of this, these crystals take a very long time to despawn. The first set of ejections, Try not to use any significant healing cooldowns and just make sure you spam heal the affected targets, making sure that the final tick doesn't kill them. Meanwhile, the affected players just need to move towards the edges of the room. You'll end up filling the entire outskirt of the room by the time the phase ends. Just try to keep the crystals close together just to maximize room. After this, you can then move into melee ready for the frigid Nova. For the next set of ejections, you'll have even more players affected. 
For this set, we use a Guidance and a Battle Res Totem just in case. A Sacrifice is placed on the tank and all healers just spam heal the debuffed players. Healers really need to get into the habit of topping people before they time out and then switch to new targets after the debuff has timed out. There is no panic whatsoever to top them after they've taken the final tick. There's no other damage going out. Towards the end of these injections, you'll also have the second conjunction. After you've dealt with all of that, you can then go back into melee and this is where you'll have your second Nova. Now the next part coming up is the hardest in the phase. This next set of ejections you have far less room to move into, but there's also significantly more of them. For this set we use wings and a devotion aura mastery just before the first set explode. We also use a healing tide slightly later, as well as all the VEs we have. This is also a great point to use a personal cooldown. To add another layer of roughness to this particular part, you'll also have your third conjunction cast. With this particular one we don't really have much advice apart from you just have to be fast and decisive. It's entirely possible that yourself or even your partner that you need to be matched with have the ejection at the exact same time. Keep that in mind and be prepared to run towards them rather than expecting them to run towards you. And it's shortly after this point that you'll want to transition into the fell phase. If you do get the fourth ejection, they absolutely suck. You should try and avoid getting this at all costs because healers are forced to use cooldowns here and really they're better safe for later points. Now before we move into the next phase, let's quickly talk about tanks. So the way that we deal with the Comet stacks in Mythic is that we have two groups behind the boss and the tank will simply alternate between each group, dropping his stack each time a Comet lands on him. If you've decided to use a single tank, you need to make sure you're really careful while dropping your stack because the boss will be casting his Ice Burst on you at the exact same time and if you move on top of a group as the Ice Burst lands on you, you're probably going to kill the entire group. The best time to use active mitigation or cooldowns as a tank is really when the comet is about to land so you can reduce the damage of the comet landing but it'll also last for the ticks that come afterwards and to help deal with that ticking damage you just got to be really quick to go and drop the absolute zero stack on one of the particular groups also to note quite a lot of tanks will actually stand out during the nova cast this isn't really a good idea on mythic because you can't really afford using cooldowns on that so instead make sure you move into one of the groups when the nova cast comes in however do keep in mind that sometimes a comet will land during the nova cast so don't move in too early, otherwise again you're going to kill that entire group. Apart from that, there is not much else advice we can give. So moving on to the fell phase. Now this phase remains exactly the same in terms of strategy. You just got to put fires in good places and move to the walls for the fell nova, while the tank runs around eating the fire with his comets. Except you of course do have the ground conjunction to deal with now, which comes in at very awkward moments. You also have a new mechanic, which is meteors coming from the sky. Circles will appear in completely random areas of the room, and 10 or so seconds later, a meteor will land on that area, spawning the same fire patches that you get from the fell ejections. This really limits your space a lot, unless you place the fell ejections within these circles before the meteors land, and this is incredibly important, because if you decide to completely ignore these circles and just go wherever you want with the fires, you'll run out of space extremely fast. So you always want to make sure you're keeping an eye on where meteors are and you need to make sure that when you do get the fell ejection that you run to those meteor patches to leave your fire there. Now tanks with a gravitational pull need to be clever about which areas they soak. Soaking areas that have a meteor about to land on or nearby is pointless as it's just going to be refilled shortly afterwards. You want to go to areas that have lots of fires and you want to try and keep the walls clear because people need this space for the Nova casts. If you're solo tanking you will need to keep an eye on your fell burst stacks and call for a melee to taunt the boss so that you can reset your stacks. It doesn't actually deal too much damage, but it is a good idea for the taunting player to have a personal up while he's taking these hits. Now, as you may have noticed, the fell ejection now also hurts more. A lot more. We use healing cooldowns to compensate for the damage at certain moments, and we'll cover them now as we go through the phase from the start. The first set of ejections we use no cooldown for. People pre-move to the meteors, and as a result, they're typically quite clumped up, and this makes AoE healing pretty good. The second set we use a guidance because from this point onwards people are usually spread out around the room. Shortly after the second ejection you'll have your first nova, you just need to make sure that you're at the edge just like heroic. Shortly afterwards you'll get your first conjunction and this one is pretty easy, you still have a lot of space and it's only 8 debuffs. The third set of ejections we usually get through without using healing cooldowns, it is pretty rough but it is possible. However, for the fourth set, we use a Tranquility, as almost immediately after this fourth set expires, you'll have a Nova cast. So you want to have people topped up to make sure that they can survive the Nova hit. After this Nova, you'll have four seconds to spread because Grand Conjunction comes in immediately after the cast. People at this point are likely to be spread all over the room, and this is where having good communication and just being good at the mechanic will save you a lot of time during your progression. It does, however, get worse on the next Conjunction. 
The remaining ejections in this phase are dealt with without cooldowns as they're safe for the last phase. So don't be scared to use personal cooldowns and things like health pots during this last part of phase three because it can really help you stay alive. And after these ejections comes the worst part of the fight. The next Grand Conjunction, you have very little space. You need to again make sure that you're pre-spread for it. After it's cast, there is a gap of two seconds and then the boss will cast Fel Nova. After this Nova, you have four seconds to find your partner before you explode and wipe the raid. So let's break down this 15 second window. As the Grand Conjunction comes in, you want to be spread in whatever remaining space you're in. After the cast, you have two seconds to potentially grab any matching player nearby. At the same time, you want to be making plans to move towards the edge as you do have the Fel Nova coming in. Whilst making these plans, you need to keep in mind other non-matching players so you don't explode as you run into them. On this Nova cast, have every player with an immunity use it. It is the cleanest way of doing it at this point because they can stand in fire right under the boss or even go and deal with their debuff while completely ignoring the Nova damage. If every immune player manages to save a cooldown for this point, it is noticeably easier than doing it without. After the Nova, any remaining debuff players have four seconds just to match up as quickly as they can. And once you've managed that, you've pretty much completed the phase. At this point, you should be very close to the 30% mark ready for transition. We actually stop DPS for a small amount of time and let cooldowns come back up. This is because we bloodless immediately as the last phase starts. However, if you're really struggling with the fell phase, it's very easy to skip this last horrible Grand Conjunction fell Nova overlap by using bloodlust when cooldowns come up during the fell phase. It is even possible to actually skip this overlap without using bloodlust because of the recent nerfs to the boss's health. It just requires you to have very good DPS, which isn't necessarily that likely during a first kill. So it's up to you. You can lust the fell face to skip the hardest point in the fight, or you can save it and pretty much guarantee a kill if you manage to get into the last phase. So let's get into the last phase. There are two new things for you to deal with in this phase. On a timer, a massive eye will spawn outside the encounter area, and six seconds later, it'll send a beam in a line directly across the room. Anyone hit by this beam will be flat out one shot. Now the eye can spawn in multiple locations, but there are always two outcomes when it comes to safe areas of the room. Either the entrance, or as our guild calls it, the door side is safe, or the sides are safe. The best way of dealing with this eye is just having a couple of people in your raid assigned to look for it when it spawns, and then call out what locations are safe. But ultimately, there's nothing preventing everyone looking for this eye when it spawns, identifying exactly what location it's pointing towards, and then moving into the safe areas. You have so much time to react to it, there is absolutely no reason to get hit by the beam. The only other thing that's been added is smaller little eyes will actually spawn inside the room. These eyes will fixate on a player with a different type of beam. Shortly after they fixated on the player, they'll then send a laser towards them, dealing a small amount of damage split between all players within the line. As it doesn't really do that much damage, it's not super important that you have your entire raid go and stand in the beam, but if the player takes it by themselves and perhaps they have large void burst stacks because you're later on in the encounter, potentially they could be one shot it's pretty unlikely but just to play it safe just have nearby players move into the beam just so the damage is split so with all of that in mind let's go over the timings of this phase so at the start of the phase you'll have 10 seconds or so just to nuke the boss until the first big eye spawns make sure you look up into the skybox of the room find him and then react to it fast afterwards you'll have your first ad spawn on Mythic, these guys need to die. The second cast that goes off hurts a lot, and the third pretty much requires a cooldown in order to survive. So have all your DPS swap to it immediately when it spawns. Shortly after the first cast, you'll have a Grand Conjunction. Make sure you're pre-spread and deal with it safely. At this point, we use a light healing cooldown, such as Wings, just to make sure the raid is top before the second hit comes in. For the second ad hit, we use absolutely no cooldowns, and it's at this point you'll have your next big eye. And really, it's ideal that this ad is dead before you have to move from it. After this point, you'll have a while just to sit there and chill and nuke the living shit out of the boss. And in fact, from this point onwards, that's all we do. We completely ignore all adds and just tunnel the boss. And this is only achieved because we save Bloodlust for this particular phase. When the second ad comes in, its first hit comes at the exact same time as a conjunction. Again, you need to make sure that you're pre-spread for the cast. And we use Vampiric Embraces to top the damage from the first hit. When the second hit comes in, it comes again at the exact same time as a big eye spawning. Because of the movement involved, and because people are also going to have quite high Void Burst stacks, we use a Devotion Aura Mastery and a Healing Tide. We then move back underneath the boss, and for the third hit, we use a Link, a Rally, and an Ankh Totem for the extra health, as well as any personal cooldowns and immunities that are left in the raid, because at this point, the boss is pretty much dead. Now, if you do decide to Bloodlust in the Fell Phase, it's very likely that you're going to have to kill this second ad instead, 
We've done this in the past and it is rough. The void burst stacks can become pretty problematic. To add, you're also going to have to deal with another grand conjunction, which so happens to be the third one, which means that there's going to be lots of debuffs going out on the raid, as well as having to move from another big eye. It's definitely possible to do it. Many guilds do do it this way. We just don't want to recommend anything that didn't work that well for us in the past. However, with the recent uh, nerfs to the boss's health, it should be a lot easier to do it than when we was initially trying to do it. But apart from that, that's pretty much it. So the fight overall, apart from obviously having to deal with the Grand Conjunction, as well as all the new additional mechanics that have been added in each phase, it's just all about working out exactly when you want to use Bloodlust, to be honest. Yeah. We really would recommend that you try and get over that fell phase. If you can go into the last phase with Bloodlust, it, like we said, it pretty much guarantees a kill. However, if you are really struggling in fell phase with that last overlap, Lust in the fell phase instead. Get that done as soon as you possibly can. But it does mean that your last phase is going to be a little bit longer. You're going to have to kill those two adds. But providing you can get them down and the majority of your raid is still alive, from that point onwards, there's not too much to deal with apart from high void burst stacks. That's all we got time for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this video did help you out, then make sure you leave a like on it. It helps us out a lot. Also, do go check out the written counterpart for this guide over on Wowhead. The link for that is in the description below. And also a huge, huge shout out to all of our supporters over on Patreon. Thank you guys so, so much for your continued support. It really, really does help out. And we will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thank you.